and we're talking about health, wealth, and peace of mind. Don't just leave a legacy behind. Live and celebrate your life. So it's my joy to bring in some awesome people, and I have one today. And we're going to talk with Greg Stevens and just get right into it. We we before we started, we just been having, you know, like you run into somebody that you've known forever kind of feeling. So I'm just welcome my my new brother friend here, and you know, starting off running towards what your heart needs. And that just hit me when I was reviewing all the things that you do, right? It's yeah. running to what your heart needs, right, Greg? Yeah. Well, Chris, thank you for having me on. I'm excited to be here with all your listeners. And uh, uh, yeah, we just hit it off, folks, when we were uh, getting prepared. I think we went on for about 25 minutes before we even hit record. Uh, we're having so much fun here. So y'all didn't get to hear all that fun stuff, but uh, we're going to have a good time today. Right, right. Well, you all hear some more fun stuff later, I'm sure. Absolutely. Right? But, you know, I really want to get right into it because every, it is a war between good and evil right now. And people are really, you know, they maybe they want to, you know, adventure off or, you know, they're being inspired to do something or just daily life. The battle between doubt and fear in the way that it creeps in and 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 discourages people, right? So it takes the leap of faith, right? Yes, it does. It takes a huge one many times. Yeah. And when you and when when you jump out and and I like the way that when your work is a worship, right? A labor of love. Yeah. And but I think your f- real focus is communication. Yeah. Right? Is. And that's yeah. really maybe you could share with us about cuz you're you're the master communicator here. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Chris. I, I've worked hard on being a, a communicator. I, uh, I'm certified master trainer with Crucial Learning. I do some work with them. And uh, they wrote the book, uh, Crucial Conversations, Crucial Accountability, uh, uh, Influencer. A lot of their work, I just really lived and really applied for the last 20 years. And uh, I tell people all the time, people ask me what I do for a living. I tell them I hand out ice water in the desert because what I'm teaching, everyone really wants. And uh, I teach people, many people, how to get their voice back. Many people have given their voice away. They don't know how to stand in the power that they've been given in their life and they give it away. And also, many times we don't know how to say the hard things, and that's what I do with people. I help them say the hard things they need to say in conversation, but it be able to say it respectfully. How to manage your emotions during those key times, how to manage the emotions of others when, when they get upset, creating that psychological safety. So there's a lot of moving parts in the things I do, and it takes some time to actually practice and do some of these. But they're available. It's skill sets. Most people will tell uh, uh, tell someone, oh, you need to go have a conversation with this person. Uh, you need to go handle this. Great advice, but no one's ever taught me how. How do I do that and build a relationship at the same time? Many of us, when we approach these conversations, we sugarcoat our message or we try to control the conversation, attacking people that we, we don't even see our behavior in them. And we also don't see what it costs us when we do these conversations poorly. And that's what I think kind of ties in with what you do in financials. There are so many hidden costs that show up when people don't have these conversations. And uh, we tend not to think about that because, oh, I'll talk about that later. Right. What I typically find is some will say, well, I need to have a conversation and they'll go in the next day all prepared to have it. And the person's nice to them the next day. Well, I'm not going to do that. And so, and it goes on. And about two weeks later, that same problem popped up from two weeks ago that you never talked about, that you planned on it, but you didn't because that person was nice to you, but you're not back where you were. You're actually deeper in the hole. And exactly. that's what I teach people. How do you get results and build the relationship while you're doing them? Results and relationship. Perfect. And yeah. 
I'm, I like the way that you wove that in there because it, it is the same thing in, in the healthy money conversation. Nobody has healthy money. Nobody's been taught about money. Right. You go to school, you learn how to make money, get out of school. What do you do? Go make money and you give it to somebody else that's gambling it. Yeah. Right? It's a roulette wheel. Will it be there when you retire or not? And it's hard to have that conversation about money or relationships or whatever it is. Um, I just went th through something with, with my secretary and it was all about communication. We're all so busy in our heads that you think what you think that that person's saying, but they're not even, they, they're not even, it's like they're almost having a conversation with themselves. It's in their own little drama, right? <laughs> oh, and, and they are. I mean, you can't get around that. That little voice in your head is always there talking to you. And typically <laughs> We're we're saying one thing, but we're thinking and feeling a different one. <laughs> and we've never understood how to line those up and be 100% candid with people while being 100% respectful. That's a right. great concept, very difficult to do. That's why you have to build the skills to be able to do it. It doesn't come naturally because right. everything we teach kind of goes against our human nature because Boom. that goes into fight or flight. Right all of that, but we're bigger than our human nature. That's what I love to tell people. If we weren't bigger than our human nature, uh, we wouldn't be able to do all the things we've done in the world. We would just uh, uh, sit around and do whatever feels just the best. Now we gravitate for the things that feels good and try to push away. That's the natural thing. But we know that, you know what, I need to get up and eat right today. I need to go up and, and work out. That's going to keep me in the space for staying on this planet a lot longer than doing something else. Right. We want to be in good shape for our assignment. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's how I look at it. That's how I convince myself to go out, go to do your workout. Yeah. <laughs> right. well, Chris, I, I, I want to ask you, when you talk about finances, do you talk about, you know, uh, do, you, do you ever look at the cost of, what those things happen like with families when they don't discuss this, because I know that families many times, especially when there's a death or something, the families have, have to figure out how the will's going to go and everything else that happens in there. There's a lot of conversations in there. I'm sure you probably. Oh yeah. That's how I got started. I, I, I was one of the first people in Southern California and I was a paralegal doing living trusts. And nobody knew what a living trust is in 91, 92. They didn't know. They've been around since the Middle Ages. But I got into this conversation and I was working with an attorney and a widow came in. All she had was a car and a house. And he wanted to charge her $5,000. She had no money in the bank. And I said, can't you give her a deal? And he looked at me like, what? A deal? And that's what pushed me into creating affordable living trusts. And having this conversation so that it's all set up and you don't have after somebody passes away the big fight you can actually set everything up so there's no stress and there's no probate and there's no attorneys and and it works out i've done over six thousand living trusts thank god never had one problem they work if you do them right right, right, right. so that's what got me started and, and i know you can relate because those are what you call crucial conversations, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, absolutely. And what you're saying, I, I I can imagine when family members, many times they need to talk before that time, but it's uncomfortable. People don't want to do that, just like the conversations I teach. But I tell people all the time, you need to be willing to trade that 15 to 20 minutes of uncomfortable conversation for that two months two years, two decade issue that may uh, occur as a result of ha not having that 15 or 20 minutes. It's a trade-off. It's going to be uncomfortable. I'd rather shorten the time and do it in 15 to 20 minutes rather than two months or two, even two weeks. Uh, it's not worth my time and effort. Uh, that's why I've learned, you, but you got to know how to do it because right. if you don't, it, it's going to create more problems along the way. Right. It blows up. And so we, when you get into that conversation, and, and that's a big 
you know, that developing, it's just like learning to sing, right? You just don't start doing it. So right. what, what, how do you, how do you open that up for people so they can connect and relate to the people they're talking with? Well, most people ask me, what are some of the key things that you could just give me? And most people me, yeah. get sad when I tell them, I said, right. and the first one is listen. <laughs> right. Listen to understand, but that's the difference. Most people are listening to respond. Uh -huh. But if you listen to understand, you have your mind open. You're curious. You're curious rather than judgmental. Okay. And that's that's a key because your mind only works when it's on. Right. But what happens is, especially in our world today, it's the human condition. When someone believes they're right, yeah. all of their thinking goes out the window. That's Why? Right. Because if you're right, you're not looking for another answer. I've got right. the right answer. Right. And then you're blind to your own behavior, which causes you the problem in the conversation. Yeah. We don't see ourselves. When we walk into a room, I tell people all the time, you walk into a room, you look around, what's the one thing you don't see? It's yourself. <laughs> That's why coaching and mentoring are so powerful because you can't see the label when you're inside the bottle. I don't care who you are. I've done this work for years. I took a, a, a friend of mine, uh, Evan Money, he did a uh, seminar this week, of uh, uh, Mastermind for Men, Men of Greatness. And he gave me some of the best coaching I've had in years working with me. And he said, Greg, it doesn't matter how high you get in what you're doing. You're just not going to see yourself. And I know that and I teach that. But hearing it is so important as well, because if you think you've got a lock on your improvement in life, you're resting on your laurels. There's more to go. You're, you're not a finished product. You can mm -hmm. always improve and get better. And that's what I like to, that's what I'm looking for in people when I bring them in to my mastermind. I want to find people who are want to go to that next level, want that championship game. Uh, there's people who just want to participate. That's great. But I want people who want to go to that next level, who want to, 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 and when I say championship, it's their own personal values they're trying to live to. That's right. what I look at. Yeah. And I got to say, you know, and I've been in a few masterminds myself that I would not be where I'm at now without the feedback or having my master mentor say, you know, you're out of line, <gasps> you know, and all the defensiveness. I mean, right. I cannot believe how defensive, you know, everybody that knows me, I'm Mrs. Defensive, you know, because we've got all these walls. And, and you could probably say, hey, have you ever noticed when you're talking to someone, they're sitting, you're sitting there talking to them, and you can already see they're not listening. They've already got the next thing they're going to say to you, right? <laughs> and, exactly right. And and but then when you're inside, you know who you are, and that's what you go through in a mastermind to find that out. Then you're not moved, and they can't move you to you know lose your cool or right. <laughs> exactly. Well, you're the thing is, uh, we tell people all the time: either you're in charge of your emotions, or your emotions are in charge of you. There is no that's middle it. ground there. But right. you have the ability to decide how to do that. And that's what we take, take, people th take people through in some of my classes. We teach them how to not suppress their emotions, not to uh, ignore them, but actually how to create emotions that work for you rather than against you. But the problem is the moment you need to do some of those skills is the exact moment you don't want to. <laughs> that's why yeah. it takes practice right. that's why you got to but each time you practice you start creating new neural pathways to actually help you out the next time or the next time so 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 when you're maybe you could open up the a little bit and share what what processes do you do to help people create those new what do they call them synopsis you know the connection yeah. in the brain to make yeah. you respond a different way instead of getting angry <laughs> right well in, in the class we it's a process it takes some time because what we talk about are uh the things we tell ourselves the stories we tell ourselves it's all based on our past. It's based on our past experiences, mm -hmm. but your past experiences have nothing to do with current reality, except that it brought us here. 
That's it. Right. We've got, we can make a choice to do something different to create a different reality that we have. But you hear people all the time say, I should do this. I should do this. Well, the moment you say should, you're not living in reality because that's not what's actually occurring. So if I want to change my reality, I have to change that behavior and I have to change what I tell myself. It all comes, stems from that internal talk track that we have, because that's where our emotions, our feelings come from. We think they just happen to us. We actually create them and choose them based on things we've done in the past. But if you want to stop that, you have to understand mindfulness, self-awareness, understand how to turn your brain on. I tell people all the time, how do you turn your brain back on? Questions turn the brain back on. Mm-hmm. If you don't uh-huh. ask yourself questions, your brain will be shut down. That's why the moment I start feeling that I'm right about something, I start to ask, what else could be true? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What else could be true? Maybe it's not, but what else could be true? But I start three or four of those. Hmm. Well, then I start to get curious rather than judgmental. And one of the things, one of the problems today with our world, people are so divided because Mm -hmm. we're focused on our differences. We're not looking at how we're alike. We want to, uh, it's all about wanting to feel that I'm I have some confidence that I'm doing something. I'm better than you at one level. We don't want to say that out loud, but I've got to make sure I'm on top of my game. And we don't get curious about those things. We want to be right. Right. And boy, being right just gets in the way. It really does. We don't see what it does to our relationships or our results. That's what causes all the angers and the war and all of this back and forth. Yeah. But, you know, you're not brand new. You've done this. You've been, you know, you've helped over 400 organizations, right? Mm-hmm. From C-suite to whatever, right? All yeah. kinds of, you have quite a track record. So, and that's what I like. It's almost like the little key that picks the lock. It just could be one or two things, but maybe you could open that up and share with what, what is, what's going on inside of this mastermind and what, what do you, what are yeah. you working on there? Yeah, on the mastermind, what we do, we take uh, uh, individuals uh, from organizations, leaders, uh, typically, that want to go improve the results of financial results, have more time, um, also build stronger relationships, be able to have people keeping their word throughout the organization, uh, keeping your intellectual property of your people in the organization, uh, creating a culture where people can actually uh, speak up. So that's our goal in Mastermind. But our goal uh, as we do it, we have people go and work on their actual conversations. So uh, people, uh, and the reason I know this so well is when I started doing this work, I had this harebrained idea of I'm going to go clean up all my past relationships. When I say clean up a relationship, I'm talking about if you saw someone walking down the hall and you didn't want to engage with them, you take the side the sides, uh, uh, the other hallway, or you turn around and walk away if you could. That was a relationship I needed to clean up, clean up. If I couldn't look someone in the eye and feel comfortable, no matter what it was, and I had on that list, I had old college professors, some old college roommates, uh, uh, some direct reports from the past, some old bosses, some old colleagues, a ton of ex-girlfriends, uh, two ex-wives, <laughs> I had I ran the gamut. It took, me, <laughs> took me nearly two and a half years to have all those conversations. Right. And some of them were one and done. Some of them took several different times. One person took seven different times. So there's no perfection in this. But in doing that, I got to practice all the things. I took the things that I teach and I applied them. And I applied them. You're asking about how you create those new neural pathways. Just like in music, you're a musician, practice, practice, practice. You can't get around it, but you want to get good at it. I used to be scared of conflict. Now I love to engage with it. Here's why. You don't get to have a breakthrough until there's conflict. Right. You have to break through something. That's the conflict. So your conflict is your doorway to success. When you start looking at it like that, 
you start to say, I want to lean in more effectively, then you have the motivation to have those, but even motivation isn't going to cover it if you don't have the skills. That's good. That's yeah. really good. Yeah, for sure. So, so you you talk about crucial accountability. What do you what do you mean by that? Well, in crucial accountability, this is another uh, crucial learning program. Uh, it's a crucial conversation about a gap between mm-hmm. what the expectation was and what actually happened. So we have this expectation someone needs to be here right. and their performance is down here. Yeah. An accountability conversation is specifically about that gap, but it's not just about the gap. It's about trying to help the other person not do it for them, but support that gap closing. And it's a it's a relationship conversation in essence of how but it's it's a hard one to have because I've got to show that person they know where the expectation is. And here we are. How do we close that gap together? And right, right. It, it takes skill to do it. We have to look at there's different sources of influence. The model is is amazing, but that's a two day class as well. So there's all of these classes take time. That's the other thing I see so often. People want the results, but it takes time. <laughs> right. I don't care what it is. You can only understand and learn so much in a certain amount of time and all the you know, drinking from a fire hose doesn't mean you're going to drink any more than you could if you were sipping. In front. You're, there's a limit to what you can understand and obtain, and it takes consistent time and practice and direction. You look at a pro athlete, they, they, they're they pro athlete. Why do they need a coach? Because a coach can see the things they don't do and don't do. If they're off just a little, that can be seen but they don't see it. And that's what you, you need, the consistency of a of certain several weeks of practicing, going out and coming back and getting uh, direction th- from those things. Absolutely. And yeah. and most successful people have lots of coaches, right? Or lots oh, of master. I mean, they're in masterminds and, and, you know, someone's telling about this part and this part and you have all kind a team yeah. to really, you know, not just be average, right? To be successful in in a big way, and and not just on money, right? Yeah. But the what whole that championship, championship, yeah. What that championship, spiritual, <laughs> healthy, happy. Yeah. Spin. Well, uh, also, Chris, I, I w- most people don't even think about this, but uh, most people don't understand the cost of not having conversations, good one. and we 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 have no idea. Okay. I'm not going to have that conversation. Uh, Crucial Learning did a survey and they found respondents said 43% of respondents said that they cost their organization at least $10,000 for every conversation they didn't have. When you look at lost time, complaining, uh, having to redo things, all of that, 30% put it at $25,000. Think about that. Nice. And 19% put it at $50,000. Now, the, and these have gone up over the years. I think in 2007, they started these surveys. And about that time, 2006, 2007, it was about 1,500. Then mm-hmm. 2015, it had gone up to 7,500. Now it's between 10 and 50 grand as you look at that. Mm-hmm. So what's happening is that more than one of three people admit that they're costing their organization at least 25,000 in time and resources. Ooh, every wow. conversation. Think wow. about that. That's insane. It is. It is, yeah. but it's it's it, it's <laughs> we don't see it because right. it's in passing. It never happened. That's it right. never happened. Right. But over and over when I when I talk with people and they have the conversation, they have the breakthrough, they close the deal or they get a team to collaborate and they have breakthrough uh, breakthroughs throughout. That's why I, I believe you need to train every person in your organization how to have these because you're going to capitalize on We waste so much money on other things. I, I, a, a big company, I would suggest take part of your advertising budget and put it into training your people to have these difficult conversations That's because great. then... I, if you did it one year, you would pay for everything, not all your advertising, just a piece of it. 
-hmm. but you would have a, an organization that could, does that mean your problems are going to go away? No, it means you deal with problems more effectively. Right. Yeah. Deal with jo problems. Right. Yeah. Joseph Grinney, the, one of the authors of Crucial Conversations, he has a saying that, uh, that the real cost, you can tell the health of a relationship, an organization, or a team by the lag time between when problems are spotted and when they're discussed. Mm. So if you have a short lag time, we see something and we talk about it really quickly, you probably got a healthy relationship team or organization. But the longer it takes you, the more unhealthy it is. That's why we see so much dysfunction in, or in organizations. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah. So, so that's exciting. And, and why don't you share with everybody um, what you what you're focus on right now yeah. and how they can get in contact with you? Yeah. And well, thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm putting together a mastermind and our masterminds are limited. And not everyone who comes gets mm -hmm. in because we have a screening process because it's a real team because in a mastermind, it's a group of people working together. I used to coach one-on-one -on -one and that I, I used to get kind of boring, kind of slow for both parties, but with a mastermind, you move so much quicker. And when I coached one-on-one, -on -one, I always tell my, told my clients, I said, uh, I'll keep you for six months to a year. And most people want to have them longer. I was like, what do you mean? I, I was like, no, my job is to, get you moving, not to depend on me. Right. And I've done this so long, I was able to move it down, move it down. But with a mastermind, with other people working with it and, and working as a team, what happens is that time frame is really condensed and we can do it in about a 12 week period. And so that's my goal is that we teach people how to have these conversations, have them go practice and have these skills for the rest of their life. So that's what I'm focusing on filling in January. We're going to have as only 12 seats available. That's all that's all we'll do. We're going to do three a year at 12 seats available. It's going to be a kind of an exclusive place for leaders to be able to do that. I also have a company called Alignment Resources where we do training to the masses where we have programs like uh masterful mentoring and a friend of mine Mark Carpenter wrote master storytelling chris hopefully as we talk we can get some of your financial classes in there because oh. that's something we don't do we work on the softer skills and chris and i talked earlier and i hope to get her in working with us to teach the financial side so we can be more holistic and cover everything but our goal is to reach out and help people as we do this another gentleman named roger dean duncan has a online program called change friendly how do you create change but i also encourage people to uh, go to crucial learning that's one of the people i work with i don't get anything from them but i i'm a master trainer with them uh their programs crucial conversations crucial accountability influencer all very powerful programs for organizations so you can go to alignment-resources.com to find my mastermind find some of the other programs we teach one of the cool things uh chris and i were talking about as well we have a gentleman named darden smith he is a musician and songwriter and he goes into organizations and does a team building exercise where they take a team and they create a song together. And uh, the write out a song, he works with them. He does it about, it's amazing, about 70 to 90 minutes. And then he goes back, records it in the studio and sends it back the next day to everyone with a, it's a quite an experience, but it's something very different. And that's what we want to do with our organization is create these out-of-the-box thinking programs, even our masterful mentoring, one of the problems we find with mentoring is that the relationship breaks down, but no one follows up on it. And what we find so many times, mentors are saying, well, it's the mentee's job to run the conversation. I live my life by this mantra, everything in my life I create, promote, or allow. So if that's my mantra, as a mentor, my job is to create a great mentorship for that mentee so we teach mentors how to connect with the mentees if they're having problems and how to connect people so everything you want to find out about me is on alignment-resources.com don't forget the dash between there because but my goal was to bring all these different resources and put them together to help people in their lives in their work in their relationships 
Fabulous, Greg. This has been a super blessing having you on today and being able to talk about conversations and and have some good conversations as we go through. One final tip that you want to leave everybody today. Yeah, uh, it's how I define respect. (laughs) And I love this. I define respect by give me the benefit of the doubt. Hmm. And if I don't deserve that, give me the gift of telling me why I don't. Because that will help me grow to be better. And that's what I'm trying to do. I hope you can take some of that same feeling on. I want to I want to assume the best of people. And if they don't deserve it, it's my job to not bark at them about it, but help them along to possibly show a blind spot they don't see. Beautiful. You get it's just like giving everybody a hundred percent and then they'll subtract it themselves. <laughs> exactly. Simply, That's simply put. So <laughs> It'd be really cool. And for everybody, you can you can subscribe to this channel, but we're also on YouTube. So there's a very beautiful video there that you can go over and see and share with your friends and all your C-suite people and everybody to pass on the good communication so we can start to harmonize together. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, alignment is where it happens. It's amazing what we can build when we're aligned. It's amazing what we tear down when we're divided. That's right. So we're building it back up. So we have exactly harmony song. Thank <laughs> All you right. so much. There's so much to learn about healthy money. I hope today's discussion brings you one step closer to securing and protecting your future. So you can get started on the right foot. Go to meetwithchrismiller.com and schedule your free financial fitness strategy session. Thank you for listening, and please subscribe to Money 911 so you don't miss our next episode, which includes health, wealth, and peace of mind.